So the story of PMC starts in the 1980s where Peter Thomas, the founder, the owner of PMC, was chief engineering manager at Maidavell Studios in London. Maidavell Studios owned by the BBC where they do a lot of recording and broadcasting of live music. Lots of musical styles, lots of artists, lots of different genres going through uh, Made of Ale. And there was a requirement by the studios for a new main monitor that could uh, go very loud, could fill a large control room, uh, but also extend very low in terms of the low end, the bass as well. But more importantly, sounds good. Um, at the time, during the 80s, there were, there were certainly main monitors available and they could go loud and deliver a lot of bass, but they didn't necessarily sound very high resolution, very high quality which didn't lend itself very well for things like mixing and critical production applications. And so over about a course of two years, Peter Thomas and his partner, Adrian Loder, who would co-found PMC, uh, produced what would be PMC's first main monitor, the BB5 XBDA active main monitor system, which was promptly installed and made available um, nearly 30 years ago and is still in use today. And over the past nearly 30 years, uh, we've uh, evolved our product line to the professional markets, producing over 20 models of speakers these days. In the studio, uh, the professional is looking for a monitor that is transparent, that is very linear. That's really important uh, to be able to hear exactly what's going on, all frequencies, all volumes. So if decisions need to be made, if edits need to be made, they know they're hearing nothing but the music. They're not hearing coloration from the speaker. For example, in this studio, we have the IB1SA powered midfield. We have the Result 6 active near field and the DB1 gold, which actually crosses over between the professional and the domestic market as well. In the home setting, we mainly use passive loudspeakers where we will need an external amplifier. In the studio, we do use passive loudspeakers, but primarily we will use active speakers and powered speakers. A powered loudspeaker is a loudspeaker with a passive crossover uh, with its own built-in amplifier, and the audio will hit the amplifier first before going to the crossover and then being distributed to the drivers. Whilst a truly active loudspeaker has its own amplification, but the crossover, the powered crossover, sits before the amplifiers. So the line level hits the powered active crossover first, which then drives the discrete amplifiers before it goes to the drivers. You may have noticed I said discrete amplifiers in the active system, because in an active loudspeaker, you will have several amplifiers driving each of the drivers separately. So when the line level hits the crossover and the crossover splits the frequencies into several bands, the high band will go into one amplifier, which is independently driving the high frequency. The mid bands will go to the second amplifier, which will drive the mid range. And the third low band will go into the uh, amplifier driving the LF driver. So we're setting up a studio, should we go for active, should we go for passive, should we go for powered? In general, an active system will outperform a passive system, in general. However, there are advantages and benefits for both. For example, an active system, it's a turnkey system. It's the loudspeaker, it's the crossover, and it's the amplifier, all designed in one. It's all very tightly controlled, and therefore the designer is getting the very best out of all those elements, the, the drivers, the, the crossover, and the, and the electronics. In a passive design, um, they may not have that overall control. For example, the, you may use a, a separate amplifier. And so we don't have that same uh, ownership of the electronics with the speaker. But the passive route can be a good upgrade path. You can have your speakers and you can have an amplifier. And then as you uh, move on in your career, you can then upgrade your amplifier or you can upgrade your speaker separately. Uh, similarly, you may have your own favored combination of amplifier and speaker. It's important to understand how each design works and the benefits of each. In an active system, again, we have our discrete amplifiers. Um, so we have several amplifiers doing less work, uh, driving each of the drivers. In a passive design, you have one amplifier, typically, which is handling the whole frequency range, and so you have less headroom. But a powered speaker, which is strictly a passive loudspeaker, but with the amplifier built in, the design of the amplifier is controlled again by the manufacturer. So we can get the very best performance out of the amplifier, out of the crossover, out of the drivers and cabinet. So as a turnkey system, you're getting the very best audio quality out of it you can. So in the end, whether you choose active, passive or powered, it really comes down to budget, the overall quality of the design of the speaker, and what you want to hear.